It's the Environmental Conservation Board. We have an agenda that we're going to follow. And the first item is eligible for a permit. That is Austin Bohm, 672 Union Valley Road, renovate an existing house on same footprint. Could you please state your name and who you're here to represent? Hi, my name is Austin Bohm. I'm here representing myself. I'm the property owner. Um, we were delayed due to the weather, uh, but the adjustments had been made, and uh, I believe I was called back after the public comment period. Right. Okay. Um, so there were no questions or comments from the public. The uh, town engineer has written that in response to requests, the engineering department as part of the MS4 review process has previously reviewed the application package submitted. As provided in the attachment, there are some minor comments that will need to be addressed prior to approval. And then that was on December 14th. Oh, and then he had given comments. Were those addressed? Um, they are in the process of being addressed by the engineers. I have all the comments addressed, but again, I'm, I can't prepare the plans myself. They have to send yeah. them over to the town. So. The uh, MS4 plans. Oh. They uh, asked for, um, did you want me to read their comments? I can, I can. No, I don't need to. Ha I, I, have, I have his comments here. I, I just want to see because, I mean, you're here. He submitted a SWIP. He submitted another this notes of intent. And then this talks about the septic system with the disturbance, about 9,000 square feet. And these are not very big. I mean, I mean, I'll make the, I'll grant the, I mean, I have to take care of the board. I would grant the permit contingent on the fact that he submits the approved, uh, the approved electronic version plans in the water. This beside the seals. Uh, not the error on the drawing. Provide details of access. To the access great. to remain future maintenance of the septic system. Mm -hmm. the details of the access to remain for the future. Oh, I see. And I have I have those details if you want me to read what the engineer is putting on the new plans. Um, sure, if you have if Yeah, I said, so provide, provide a north arrow. They're going to provide a north arrow. Sure. Provide details of access to remain for future maintenance of the septic system. We will provide a cross section of temporary construction access to the temporary system. There are no details for construction. It's just a dirt, dirt path. Mm -hmm. Additional details regarding the control of runoff from future maintenance access onto Union Valley Road needs to be provided. We would propose a burned, burn made of compost filter socks across the access path. Those are the and responses from the comments. engineers. Details of the access to remain for future maintenance. Of, what they're asking in this to keep the path. Yeah, they're saying, are you so in order to pump the septic system in the future, you need access to that area. How are you going to maintain? Like how how are, if you're not going to keep the path that's there that you're using for installation. How are you going to maintain it moving forward, or are you going to keep the path? So they're asking I'm, I'm for good. I'm going to keep exactly what's there right now, which is a dirt path. That's how they're accessing it now, and that's how they're going to access it for okay. the septic. And then there's going to be a berm made of compost filter socks that goes across the access path. I mean, that's for that's during, right? That you would remove that afterwards. Filter compost filter socks aren't. Is that a long-term maintenance plan? No. Right. Okay, that's fine. I understand what you're saying. So, so should I? I mean, I can just tell the engineer they need to change that to uh, you just need to have a I think that the way I'm reading this interpreting it is that uh, what they're what is being asked for is how are you going to in the future a year from now every year whatever it is mm -hmm. moving forward how are you going to maintain that septic system like what kind of access do you need in your case what you're saying is you're gonna leave it as a dirt path and just use that and not improve it anymore Fine. Put a note, something like that, on there. I think yeah, that's put a note on the drawing. That's fine. Okay. And let's put a note on there. Maintain access to septic system for yearly, or yeah. whatever yeah. maintenance. Oh, and then the bottom detail here is, here is regarding control of runoff from the future maintenance access, and that's what this filter sock is probably for. Okay. That's fine. None of this is material. Yeah, it's not. So, so then, <clears throat> this is the stormwater calcs. Okay. 
So there were no comments, which is email we discussed, the AF and signed permit. So do I have a motion to grant permit number 992 to Austin Bohm to with the following two conditions. One, town wetland inspector to do a pre and post site visit for installation of erosion control. And two, provide approval in advance of work for stormwater calcs as noted in 1214 email by town engineer. Also, a <coughs> note needs to be added that that site will not be improved, like the road, the access road will not be improved. Access road, access path. Yeah. To septic will not be improved, right? Mm -hmm. Access to septic maintained. Okay, so then I'm going to read it again. Uh, do I have a motion to grant permit number 992 to Austin Bohm for 65? for 672 Union Valley Road with the following three conditions. One, town wetland inspector to do a pre and post site visit for installation of erosion control. Two, provide approval in advance of work for stormwater calcs as noted in 1214-22 email by town engineer. And three, access path to septic will not be improved, access to septic maintained. Do I have a motion? So, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so basically, Go see Rose on Monday. Get your drawing in. You can't, what you'll have to do is when you submit the drawing, go see Rose, show her that you got the approval. She'll put it in the file. She'll check that off was good. And then um, once you get your uh, silt fences up, you can uh, start work. Okay? I have to get the building permit from the town. Steps, well, so yeah. one step at a time. Yep. All right? Thanks. Thank we just got to do the AF. We'll propose action, create a material conflict with an adopted land use plan or zoning regulations. No. 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 Will the proposed action result in a change in the use or intensity of use of the land? No. 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 Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? No. 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 Will the proposed action have an impact on the environmental characteristics that cause the establishment of a CEA? No. No. Will the proposed action result in adverse change in the existing level of traffic or affect existing infrastructure for mass transit biking or walkway? No. No. Will the proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy and it fails to incorporate reasonably available energy conservation or renewable energy opportunities? No. No. Will the proposed action impact existing public-private water or public-private wastewater? No. No. Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of important historic, archaeological, architectural, or aesthetic resources? No. No. And will the proposed action result in adverse change to natural resources, example, wetlands, water bodies, groundwater? No. No. And will the proposed action result in increase of the potential for erosion, flooding, or drainage problems? No. 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 And will the proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources and human health? No. No. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item. Uh, Bullet Hall Farms, 360 Bullet Hall Road, tree harvesting. Please state your name and who you're here to represent. Good evening. Um, I'm, my name is Christopher Prentice, Lower Hudson Forestry Services. I'm representing uh, Bullet Hall Farms Incorporated. Um, this is a follow up to the November 17th meeting. Excuse me for a minute. Hey guys. You guys want to go outside, please? Um, where I submitted the application for a uh, selective timber harvest on a 360 uh, bullet hole road, tax parcel 53.17 1 39. Um, the board had asked for a submission of some. Um, information <clears throat> regarding um, the 
uh, entrance to the property, um, the uh, length of the project, how many trucks in and out, the truck routes, etc. cetera. Uh, I'd submitted that to uh, Rose on December 12th. Um, and um, two things uh, in the meantime, I have been in contact with um, Mr. Simone at the uh, highway department. We've gone back and forth. Uh, originally, they rejected the location of the temporary driveway, <clears throat> asking me to move it either further east on the road, which would result it being in the wetlands, or further west on the road, which would result it being kind of on a hill where I'd have to excavate out part of the hill. So uh, we're trying to work that part out. Um, I'm asking that they allow an entrance with less than 200 um, feet of sight distance with the provisions that there's signs up and a flagger for every time a truck goes in and out. They're debating that still, and he said next week I should have an answer. Um, what, did, what did you do? I called the DEC a yep. um, month ago, mm -hmm. and I forget who I spoke to. Uh, one of the Grasso. gentlemen on the, uh, the application, did, and they said that they were going to take the Title 24 or the... Um, yeah, so that's gonna, the second. Gonna, yeah. That's the second thing. So the Article 24 Article permit 24. is now um, in motion. Uh, the 30-day period for the town to either take or reject being lead agency on Secra has passed. So the DEC did not receive any um, word from the town. So now the DEC is lead agency on this project, which is fine. Yeah. So. Um, as per the regulations of Article 24, um, I have to put a um, public notice in the newspaper of record. There's a 15-day comment period, um, and then at the end of those 15 days, if there's any comments, um, they're addressed by the DEC. If not, the permit is issued. And when um, are you planning to do the 15? <coughs> when does that start? So Rose told me there's two newspapers of record, the um, Mayo Pack news they will be um, having the uh, notice run next Thursday the 12th and then the Putnam County news I believe is going to run on the 11th so the 15 day period should be ending. so by the end of, Feb of January correct the 27th okay I mean I I mean we reviewed this Jeez. Uh, November 17th Correct. so I mean I, I mean until I get no comments from the public you know based on your 15-day notification based on the uh, you know the DEC once they get back to you on the article 24 I mean I really can't act on this permit so uh, I mean so I, I guess this is more of you coming in here to give us giving us an update because I can't accept the application without two pieces of information. Right. Well, so it's more of an update. I just want to see if the board wants any other information other than the Article 24 permit. Yeah, the Article 24 is the big one, right? Mm -hmm. That's the big one. Uh, I think you addressed the bridge that we want to go over the, uh, the yep. little stream there. Yep. We addressed that. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you can see by the pictures. Um, the Article 24 permit is. Um, I know. It's for a stream that size. It's really kind of overkill, but it is what it is. So. Yeah, because I called him, and you know he seemed very amenable to, you know, to talk about it, to go through it. Mm -hmm. The, the end of the conversation, just was, just do it and <laughs> get it over with. Right. So. <clears throat> I wish it was that easy, though. No, I know. Nothing is that easy. Right. <laughs> I mean, I guess the only thing maybe I would ask is that um, in the meantime, could the town forester review the project so then a letter could be written to the town and not have to wait for them uh, to do that after? We could do a cursory review on it. I could ask the town forester to do a cursory review. Okay. Uh, mind if I just do a quick jump through the notes from last time? Be my guess. Sure. I just read the whole thing, I got uh, all the notes from you. You submitted um, silver fence, contractor licenses, saw that, bridge crossing details, saw that, skid gel details, saw that, delineation of the border, 
I saw you flag that with blue flags. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. The entire wetland is flagged in blue. Uh, the buffer is flagged in blue. Excellent. Pictures provided that. Water ball lo bar location. I saw that on the map. So approximate. Right. Uh, final Silk cleanup. Fence. Yep. Final cleanup narrative. Project dates. Note about the forest through machinery storing on poly overnight. No fueling and buffer. So that. Truck loads. Highway department. Notice. Um, wetland delineation. From the DEC. That's what Article 24. Okay, and then uh, bridge and erosion control wetland inspector. Well, yeah, well, we'll have to have the wetland right. inspector once you put your bridge over machine. the river through the woods. Through the woods <laughs> when you go see Grandma. Right. Why? <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> All right, so we need the wetland inspector to uh, inspect. And post, and that's it. All right, um, I'll tell. Uh, I'll ask Rose to have the arborist or the arborist to take a look at the file and issue whatever preliminary letter based on the fact that you still have to give us the Article Twenty Four, right. and then we're good. Okay. All right. Let's, let's complete and see. Yeah. As soon as you get that, we can put. put as long as the there's file. no changes next right. time, you're good. No, there's no changes. So. Any questions, Anthony? Uh, no. Ed? Nicole? No. All right. Okay. You're Thank good. You. Thanks. Have a good evening. Okay. Number three. Mayapak Golf and Beach Club, 601 North Lake Boulevard, maintenance of on-site drainage ditches. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, there's a tripod around here somewhere. I think Vinny's got it. Move it. Vinny's got yeah, it. Vinny probably has it. Is there an easel one? Please uh, state your name and who you're here to represent. Yeah, I'm here, uh, Tim Allen of Bibbo Associates, um, representing the uh, golf club. Uh, with me tonight is uh, Terry Fian, he's our Greens chairman, and uh, John Lupinacci, a member of the club. I'm also a member of the club for uh, 20 years. So um, we're here before you tonight. Uh, generally, we uh, undertake uh, some winter maintenance throughout the years of the, being at the club. and. Uh, this year, um, we're proposing to tackle uh, some of the drainage ditches that are on the back nine of the club, uh, specifically holes number 11, 12, 13, 17, uh, a series of uh, ditches that carry water most, uh, mostly in the wet season. They dry up in the summer. Um, over the years, they've been neglected um, and, and contain a lot of silt and uh, built up vegetation. And what you'll see in those photos is it basically becomes very stagnant and the water doesn't flow out of there properly. So what we want to do is restore the stream or the ditches and the beds back to their original condition so the water actually flows the way it's supposed to. If you look at the very last photo, which is where the, it, the water exits the site, um, you can make out in the background, that's the last culvert pipe section that uh, comes off the property here. Mm -hmm. And that pipe is silted up probably almost halfway right now. Um, so we just want to go in, clean it up, and uh, take that material and bring it back to the maintenance area. The operation we propose to be is a small backhoe with a, uh, a loader, a small loader. And instead of moving it twice, we'd like to um, take the material, put it right in the loader and truck it bring the loader back, so that way we're not putting it on the fairway or, or stockpile material. Yeah. Um, that's ideally, if we have to stockpile material, 
we'll put it in the loader and move it immediately. So where the material we don't want to keep at the edge of the ditches. One of the pictures I'm looking at, there's a, a lake or a little pond. There's a small little pond on uh, hole 12. It's mm -hmm. man-made. And you've flagged, you've checked the DC and the Carmel wetlands. There's no DC wetlands. There's not, no DC wetlands. Correct. As a matter of fact, this doesn't show on the town wetland. There's only, the only town wetland is off site to the west. And what are you going to do? You're going to just excavate this all out and stone it? Excuse me? You're going to excavate all the organics out and stone it? Or you're just going to put, put it at the maintenance area and, uh, and hopefully repurpose it. But what are you going to do when you clean all this out? Like, I don't understand. Are you putting pipes in the burying? No, we're not burying any pipes. We're just cleaning it out so that the, the material gets back to its natural bed. Okay, so you're basically removing just silt and... The silt in the... Uh, yeah. Okay. You do can you... see in some of the areas it's, it's not as bad as, as... And how long do you think this task will take? Uh, we're proposing it to be two weeks, weather permitting. Okay, now my next question is... You're using a small backhoe and um, <clears throat> a small backhoe and a loader and a truck, right? Mm -hmm. So, do you show on here? I know the lake is south, is the low portion of your drawing, correct? It's across yes. the road. The, the Maypack Lake is here. Actually, we don't, this area does not drain to the lake. It actually goes underneath the commercial center on Route 6 into Mud Pond. Okay. How deep does the excavation have to be, roughly? We're taking out roughly six inches to, in some areas, if you see the photos, there's about a foot of accumulated material in various areas. In some areas, it's not so bad. Other areas, it is. So is it's not a lot of material, just a couple scoops of tobacco in some areas, just to pull it out. Are, are you um, are you going to be making any changes to the water uh, the water courses that you're like the uh, drainage ditches like the either the where they run the location expanding them no no you're just basically no silting it out you're hogging it out nothing's changing all the elevations are remain the same everything else just the material that's accumulated in there will be taken out. And what are you, uh, you said you're going to repurpose that on, on site? The on material? the golf course, if, we, if the material is, is usable for, for somewhere on the golf course, let's say if we need a sod area or somewhere or we had to patch mm -hmm. a spot, I mean, that, that material could probably be used. Fill in some of John's divots. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, John, I couldn't resist. <laughs> All right, so the only, the only stipulations I have is... Um, it's going to take two weeks' work, right? And uh, we're also, and I, I think I noted in my letter, is that we're also, uh, we'd like to do this when there's a, a bit of a frost on the property. Um, it makes it a lot easier to get in out of there without tracking through and, and, oh, yeah, you won't and dangerous. So it's, it's weather permitting. So the only thing I'm, just a couple of things I'm concerned about. One is at night, you're not going to leave the, the equipment on site at night, are you? No. You're going to pull it off site into the, the maintenance area. Maintenance area. Okay, no refueling in, on, the, no. on the property near the water, even though it is a man-made lake. Mm -hmm. um, and then the area where your man-made lake is, just throw some silt fence around it for the areas that you're working near it, mm -hmm. on or near it. Silt fencing? Yeah, just some silt fencing around the land, and then it can be removed. And I'm not asking, you can just get the wet, once you put it up there, you get the wetland inspector just to take a look yeah. at it. I'm just taking those precautions. Even and one thing I'm going to add to this plan, which I've been thinking about, is I'm going to put a, uh, at the, the ultimate outlet of this, I'm going to have them put a, a stone check dam uh, so that as we're storing it up a little bit that we're catching that before it leaves the site. So I'll uh, add that. All right. A stone uh, It's dam. very convenient so because one of our, one of our it's members like, It's like a weir. Basically, as the water goes up, the, settle, the solids drop out of the water, and then mm -hmm. the water just goes out. Those, so those three things need to be added at least onto your onto the permit. If you can get note. me these drawings on those these three comments or four comments on a note by Friday, you can. I mean by Monday, you know, we probably you know, we're okay. But it has to be Monday. Yeah. 
Again, I think we're, we're looking for a frost. We're looking for a little colder conditions anyway to start. We're looking for, we're actually thinking about just giving you a letter, yeah, a letter of permission, a letter of maintenance yeah. instead of a permit on this. Because you're, you're not in the wetlands, you're not in the buffer. Right. I mean, you're coming here ahead of time. Um, so I'm, I'm, if you can add those notes. And that, the only other thing is you show a soil stockpile location. That's if, if they're not be able to, let's say the truck is running slower, they're moving a little quicker, if they're going to stockpile it, then they'd set it on the side. Um, I proposed on the plan in my notes that uh, there'd be nothing left overnight, that they'd have everything, if they do stockpile it on the edge of the ditch, that it not be left there overnight. But I just showed the stockpile area that, so basically it's, just as a but it's not intended to be a stockpile. Okay, I, I just want yeah. to make sure. It's all right. So we'll add a silt fence note and show it where it's going on the plan, and I'll add the stone check dam with a detail also. Sure, That's and then um, no fueling on site. I mean, you can fuel in the maintenance area, but no, no fueling, no fueling the near any water bodies. Near water any versus. water bodies, yeah. and then have a spill kit on site. Spill kit. Oh, I'm sorry. What? A spill kit. Spill kit. Oh. Just because in case sometimes mm -hmm. hydraulic hoses burst. burst. Oh. All right, so do I, I think this is just a, they're not in the wetlands, they're not in a buffer, they're coming here working near a non-wetland area. So do I have a motion to grant a letter of maintenance to Maypac Golf and Beach Club, uh, 601 North Lake Boulevard with the following conditions. One, that they provide a spill kit on site. Uh, no refueling on uh, site, only in maintenance area. Provide a silt fence around the lake, the, the pond. Provide details of a stone check dam, stone dam, and have notes on the drawing to us by Monday, 1-9-23. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. When you get the silt fence up, call the town uh, wetlands inspector. <coughs> see that. My advice is just put it up once, let them look at it, do your work. When you're done, take it down, show them you're done. Good. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Okay, next item, uh, Roy King, 29 Tyler Court, install floating dock. Please state your name and what you're here to do. Um, my name is Roy King. I'm here today to apply for a wetlands permit for a floating dock. Okie doke. Okay, you want to describe what you want to do and how you're um, going to do it? Basically, I'm going to do the construction off-site. What kind of dock is it going to be? Wood and plastic, floating. As you can see from my paperwork, I've gotten approvals from New York State, DEP, SOGS, DEC, and DEC Wetlands. Okay. I also know that the, the town the members of the community have asked the DEC to evaluate your permit. And that was a, a month ago. I've been in contact with the DEC as far as they're concerned. I have a permit, and I've spoken to um, different members, and 
there's really no standing. They don't own the lake. Right. You know, I don't know what, to, what else to say with that. But according to them, I have a permit. Okay. You have a written permit? Yes. You have, you guys you have, have copies have of that it. from all, all of them. Um, I'd like to address some of those emails that you guys received. I'm sure you've read them all. If possible, make comments. I'd rather hold off on a minute for that, please, before we keep going. So you are, so in order to get to the, in order to get to the lake, you have to walk through uh, the 100 foot buffer, right? Correct. All right, so at a minimum, you're going to need a wetlands permit to bring the dock down, right? Yes. So you're going to have to walk through there. So we're going to get, you're going to have to get a wetlands permit. Correct. So the other question is, I need to know what is the size of, uh, see, your drawing here, you give me a picture of your property, and then, you know, you show the Kirk Lake down here. So I need, I pretty much need a, a regular size drawing or a, a, a drawing that shows me on it where the hundred foot buffer is on the drawing. Okay. okay. I need, I can, if you're going to give me two drawings to, you know, a drawing mm -hmm. split in half, you know, next oh, yeah. time just tape them together and give me one drawing. Give me another one. I'm just. Is that the only one? No, there's, th there's three of them. So, yeah, you can look at this one too. So, now, I also have permission from the town to maintain because there's an easement that runs through my property from the retention pond that runs right down to the lake. Now, I have permission to clear it and keep it and maintain it clean you're not, I'm, through you're, the wetlands. As of right now, you're not, I, right now, you're before me for a dock. Yes. Okay. So, before I can even accept the application, I need a more detailed uh, survey on one page showing me where you intend on the drawing. You need to show me where the 100 foot buffer is mm -hmm. on the scaled drawing. Let's make, maybe make, make that very specific. So I need a scale drawing, drawing of property. With well, it does show us. It does have a scale on this one inches equal thirty. But how do I scale it if only part of the drawing is also missing some stuff? Right? It's like I mean, I could line things up, but you know, I used to do that when I was a young engineer. I'm an old guy now, so so I need a scale drawing of property with showing the hundred foot buffer. I need to see a location of where the dock is going to be placed. I need to see know the size of the dock that you're building. What? The size. Yeah, that you should all have in your application. You have all that details, materials, everything should be there. You have it? I mean, it's uh, the very last page of the, of the... I don't have that. He has it. Can I borrow that? This is the deed? That's the deed. Yeah. Here's the deed. Take Thank a look you. at the deed. Can you see this one? No, this... Okay, the other thing is uh, if this dock goes in the in, it's a floating dock. Yes. So you're going to take it in and out? I really don't have to season? if necessary because um, the water level goes down you know, to nothing. So it would just Settle on the go down, sit on the ground, which I think would be less invasive than walking in and out of the lake every year twice to put it in and out. But if that's what's required, I could do that. It's not an issue. Okay. And then, how do you plan on getting the dock down there? Going to carry it. Forcing it? Excuse me? You're going to carry yeah, it? Yeah, just carry it. Yeah. Force it? Hand carry. Hand carry, I guess. Yeah. Excuse me? Hand, uh, hand carry, not machine carry. Yeah, no, just hand carry. 
We're probably going to have it where make you pull the dock out since it is a floating dock. But I mean, you have before I can even see anything here. I need to have a scale drawing of where it goes, how, where the hundred foot buffer is. I mean, those are the things that are required. I mean, I appreciate the fact you gave me a survey, but I just needed to show where the hundred foot buffer is and you know where you it's going to be situated on the lake. And you know, the other thing is you, you know where the property ends, correct? And the the, the lake begins. Like, is there a demarcation? There's nothing that's there, no. But on your, on your, um, I don't mean it like, Might be not, not nothing physical there, but on your drawing, on the drawing here, where the lake is in relationship to your house, right? Do you know from your house, how far down does your, your property end before you consider it from the land, shoreline, shoreline yeah. to lake? Shoreline to the house. Shoreline oh, to oh the from house. shoreline to my house. Shoreline to the your distance? house. Yeah. All that. Um, I'm not sure. Well, so I what, I'd li what I'd like you to see on here is on this, if this is a completed survey, mm -hmm. so pick a point here, down to here, mm -hmm. shoreline, right? And then here's the shoreline here. I so got you. And then just so show. Approximately 500 feet. Whatever it is. Yeah, I can, just, I can Yeah, show that on the drawing so we can at least take a look at that. And then uh, hand carry dock, and then move in and out in the season. Green. Season. You're about and 300 feet from the Yeah, whatever it is, it is. The uh, drain engagement easement that's there has a concrete structure at the mouth of it, is that correct? And the, that's at the, in, in the lake, yes. Oh, it's, in the, it's actually in the lake. That concrete structure that I specify, yes. So the dock in relation to that concrete structure, are you planning on putting it, is it very close to there? It's gonna be off at about say, five, maybe five, six feet. You could show that on your drawing, because that's a it's, permanent fix. It should be on No, I understand, yeah, what okay. I'm saying is on the, As the survey, proof you can show proof of, yeah, it. to give you an idea of where. You know, use that yeah, as your I see right here, you know, I, mean, I can't, you know, I can't do based on this. Hey, that's what I had to give the DEC. <laughs> I'm a little more. Sometimes we're I'm a little you can't be hard. You can't be harder than the DEP, and you know that. <laughs> oh. oh, believe me, I've been dealing with DEP. I've been a builder in this town for over 35 years, and I've dealt with everybody. No problem. Um, the, the distance from the concrete. That's where you look. Yeah, you can use that as you can use that. You can use that as a benchmark. Yeah, use the concrete as your concrete as a benchmark to where you're gonna come off of there. All right. All right. So, Anthony, anything? Ed? No. Nicole? Nope. I don't have anything. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put you on. You're not on the clock yet until I get these items. So I need, a, at a minimum, a scale drawing of the property showing the 100-foot wetland buffer and the location of where you propose to put this, a location of where the dock is to be placed, hand carry the dock. I'd like to see on the, the scale drawing, it has to be scaled, that, you know, it's an eight, you cannot proceed, you cannot project more than uh, 25 feet off the shoreline. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I'm only looking for 20. I, I did also want to ask about. Um, sure. Any? Are you removing any? No, nothing. Not nothing. doing anything. Trees, vegetation, nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Which again, if I could. Have I know it was done by, I read the files. I've, I, I've gotten permits from town, highway department, town engineer, excuse me, you'll get your chance, town engineer, which I just found out the other day, he's the wetlands inspector, okay, building department, um, DEC, and DEP. Nobody has an issue. I went over the parameters with the highway department and how and what he wanted me to do, which I've done. Um, like I said, telling me everything that I 
didn't do correctly or how I broke the law, I've gotten permits from everybody. Good. And I've, I've gotten no issues from anybody. I've had everybody to my house multiple times. DEC, like I said, DEC, multiple times. DEP, multiple times. Town engineer, multiple times. Building inspector, multiple times. Everybody's been to my house multiple times. Nobody has an issue with what I did, and I followed all the parameters I, I would ask I me. read your file. Hmm. I read the file. I read a lot of these emails. You know, on the, you have the uh, deed? Yeah. I just want to make sure there's one thing on the deed. Is the access at now to the uh, lake front? Is that vegetated now? It's always been grass. It's never been grass. What I went in there, which I did, which I went over with the highway department, is I took all the, the brush. The, the pond was built over 20 years ago, okay? It's never been touched. It's never been cleared. It's never been cleaned in 20 years, okay? This is now drainage from the roads that go into this pond that's filtered to go back into the lake. Okay. So how is this pond working properly if it's overgrown? Okay, and no I, I took it upon myself to clean it out I, after, after permission. And, all right, the title doesn't say anything. You're not allowed to build or put a dock there. Can I see the uh, title? Yes, you may. Thank you. Oh, if you're done. You didn't go to the, uh, you didn't go to zoning or planning, right? Not required. No, even a building uh, department's not required. All right, so for now, we're just going, we have your application, address these items, and get them in before the next, next meetings in a couple of weeks, and if everything jives, I would really like a, you could just give me a final drawing of what the dock would look like instead of the bits and pieces. And just picture of it, or? Either a picture or a sketch of it, which would show. That's not in. That's not in exchange for the the actual. Um, no, I need the survey. Yeah, yeah, we need you just want to know what it's made of, basically. Yeah, just show me a sketch. That, so that the two of these are going to be sitting here. We're going to have a Trex decking on yeah. it or whatever. Hey, actually, that should be there too. Yeah. yeah, I saw the. I saw that. Yeah, no, it's there. It's made out of pressure treated wood and Trex decking. How I deep? Didn't... If you put that dock out, how that. deep would the water be at the normal, treated. the lake's normal okay. level? The, uh, at what level? The, the In other words, if, if the dock extend was existing today okay. and the lake was at normal level, okay. um, you'd level, probably go from how deep would it be? At the end right of the off dock? the shoreline is probably about a two feet, and then it goes out to probably four or five feet at least, I would think. Depth? In depth, yeah. Okay. Precisely at. I would say at least four or five feet. 
All right, so the, the items you have to work on for next time is uh, we need a scale drawing of the property showing the 100 foot buffer, showing the location where the dock is to be placed to Should scale. Should I just uh, give it to Rose? And then yeah, you'll give it to Rose okay. and she'll give it to us. Uh, put a note on the drawings that, or in your letter that you're going to hand carry the dock. Uh, put that a note on in. There too. That's already on there also. Okay. Yep. Remove in and out at the end of the season and then a note to show. And it, show dimensions on the drawing you're giving that you're no more than 25 feet off the shore. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. I will send Rose a note tomorrow. Anybody have any, nope. any other questions? Nicole? No. Nope. Nope. Can I have the pet back? Okay. See you in a couple weeks. Next item of meeting minutes. Uh, eleven three, all present. Do I have a motion to accept the meeting minutes for eleven three twenty two? I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting minutes for uh, November seventeenth, two thousand twenty two. All present. Do I have a motion to accept the meeting minutes? I make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I know you folks are out here in the audience. I'm not ignoring you, but this is this is not a public hearing, okay? Uh, with who? Me? Um, I really do not want to turn this into an open. Uh, uh, it's not a public. It's not meeting, a public but meeting. They can comment if they want. They can provide written comments. And that's oh, what they did. Provide. No, I know. That. That's the. Mechanism. I mean, we. I've gotten all I've of read your the comments. I've read every comment. Well, pretty much all of them. Can't hear you. I saw the DEC's report. Did you read it? Yes, I did. Um, the, the problem is, is that this is a, a, a body of water, okay? And it's a body of water, and although you can't use motorboats on this thing, on this particular lake, you can use a canoe, I'm sure. No, there are motorboats on the Kirk. Kirk? Kirk? Oh, yeah. I didn't think there were. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Want to go I mean, water skiing? Go to Kirk. <laughs> well, I don't want to ski. <laughs> we'll train you. Thank you. So, I mean, you have a piece of property on the lake. I mean, if he follows the right protocols, I don't see the reason why he can't have one. I mean, I'm just looking at the facts that are here presented to me with the, the, um, the survey, the deed. the deed, the deed has nothing in it, and I don't care about the plot plan. It's, it's not, Our you know, I've, it's not, it's a legal not my document. purview. It's not a legal document. It's a, it's a site plan. It's a site plan. It's a site plan. Um, it's a filed plot, but I don't. Had the builder, whoever built that development, put on each individual person's deed that they are not allowed to put a dock on there, and if I pulled his deed and I saw the deed had no docks allowed, that's what I can do. I don't have that, that access to that plot plan. Um, as far as the trees are concerned, the town uh, highway department, um, you know, they, they approved it. They have an easement to clean it, the area. You know, he's doing something to keep the water, you know, good, I guess. And then this report from the town, the engineer from the DEP was from 
but he's not moved. He's not doing anything to make it. I, I, the trees are not under this purview right now. I'm not addressing the trees. And it goes down to the shoreline. Okay, it goes down to the shoreline. So I'm looking at from his property down to the shoreline, okay? There's a 100-foot buffer from the water up there that he cannot build on, okay? He's not building a dock. He's putting in a floating dock. But it's attached a, to something, no? No, it's going to, how are you securing it to the bed? Just how are you poles. securing that to the bed? Just two poles in the, in the... Two poles. So how will he access it? Does he wade through the water? He's, it's, on, it's on the edge of his, le his property. So he's going to walk down his property, walk onto the lake, hang out on his dock, and then walk back up. But you can walk through the okay. buffer. No, it says no activity. It says no activity, do not disturb. And no activity is, is construction. Construction. Oh, nothing to do with no. water. This is not. Go talk to your town. Oh, it's duly noted. You mean yeah. to tell me? I have it. Wait a minute. I, it's duly noted. I understand walking through there. You have a concern about it. It is not disturbing it. As far as I'm concerned, disturbing of a wetland involves excavation, any other area people walk through forests and wetlands all the time the, because the area has already been cleared because of the easement for the drainage easement there is going to be uh there is always going to be some disturbance there it is not he is not disturbing it to do uh construction he is going to drag it down whatever he's going to do if it's approved i'm not saying it's approved yet then he's going to the only other thing I could do was ask you at the end of the season, throw down some uh, some uh, wetland mix to make sure it doesn't, you don't erode any soil or anything. I mean, I mean, you're not going to disturb any dirt. I mean, oh, I'm picking it up. I'm picking it up. And I'm going to place it down. All right. So you're looking place at four down. four I mean, feet. Area of disturbance is nothing. And concrete drain pipe, I believe, does not go into the lake. Okay. I'm, we're not. I'm not here about the concrete. Yes, the highway. Don't worry. He says it's on the edge of if the If it's lake. existing, I was using that as a marker of delineation of how right. far away from it. There is many feet from the lake. As long as it's still on his property, and he's indicating that this dock is also on his property, that's my concern, is that he's keeping it within his And in his And in this, in this DEP letter, it says here, construction-related impacts have been a major source of damage to wetlands, watercourses, lake ponds, and general water quality. Construction-related impacts are expected to be minor. There must be a comprehensive demonstration of the recognition of during and, during and post-construction problems that are generated from a site. These problems must be incorporated into the layout, design, and development of a project. He is not disturbing the wetlands. He is not disturbing the buffer. He is carrying his dock from his house down to his lake. And that's the way it is. And it's not approved. We still have to see, I still have to see the rest of the documents he has to give us. That's, that's if, the way it is. If there was a deed restriction on the title, that would be a different story. It's not there. It's a submitted plan. Well, why it's a, do you ask those questions on the, can we submit the comment? Um, there, there's a whole... Right, the secret request. Yes, no. Yeah. So when you say, is this in keeping with the general... We're closed. So the so I just did a secret request, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna put this baby to bed, right? There are eleven questions that they had. Right. Will the proposed action create a material conflict with an adopted land use plan or zoning regulations? The answer is no. It's no or small impact may occur. My choices are no or small impact may occur or moderate to large impact may occur. So let's just say on the chance I say no, right? The next one, will the proposed action result in a change in the use or intensity of the land use? No, it's not. It's around the lake. So I, my answer would to the, be, hypothetically, would be no. Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? It's a lake community. Yes, we all think it does. And we all think okay, it will. But but it's, are there boats on this lake currently? Yes. That are there docks on this lake currently? Um, not anywhere near there. Nowhere near but are there docks on other parts of the lake? It's a lake. 
It's a lake. Okay, it's a, it's a lake though. And then, will the proposed action have an impact on the environmental characteristics that cause the establishment of a critical environmental area? Will the proposed action result in an adverse change to the existing level of traffic or affect existing infrastructure, the mass transit, biking, or walkway? I don't think so, but that's my position, my thought. Will the proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy and it fails to incorporate reasonable, available energy conservation or renewable energy opportunities? Will the proposed action impact existing public-private water supplies or public-private wastewater treatment facilities? You don't have a treatment, water, wastewater treatment facility there. Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of important historic, archaeological, architectural, or aesthetic resources? No. No. Minor. Small impact may occur. Remember, the two criteria are no or small impact may occur or moderate to large impact may occur. Will the proposed action result in increase for potential for erosion, flooding, or drainage problems? And then will the proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health. Yeah. And, and then it goes to, I have two choices here. Check if I've determined based on information analysis above and any supporting documentation will not result in any significant adverse environmental impacts or he has to do an impact environmental statement is required. And he's not even disturbing. Uh, uh, yeah. What size shoe do you wear? Okay, so he's got two people 11 foot but his dock is floating in the water and I'm going to I would and part of my condition if it's approved is to remove and replace the dock on a uh, on a basis and we can determine that date the next time he comes but he was putting in a house a dock a house a structure? Have you seen photos of Yes, I have. Yes. 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 Aerials, yes. Yes. He doesn't have a response. I'm not here. I'm not I am not here to, to 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 judge him, if you will, on the trees that were removed from that area. That was not done under the purview of this board. The only application I have before me right now is the installation of an 8 by 20 dock. That's it. Floating okay, dock. a floating dock. Impermanent structure. And it's going to have two two-inch posts at the beginning, and he's going to pound them in just so it doesn't float away. And at the end of the season, he'll pull them out, pull it up, call it a day, done, if it's approved. I'm not saying it's approved. If I get all the information and everything jives, and if it's approved, that's it. If the so, DEC well, if the DEC rescinds its permit, then, then we don't have an issue. Well, that's, that's part of the puzzle right there. Have you gotten a response from the DEC yet? Yes. And what do they say? And they said... I am you're not a, a, very, a very I have to, I have to look at it in a narrow, because the application I have is for an 8 by 20 got, dock. Got to use some sense Listen, I'm a proponent of common sense. I believe in common sense, okay? I, I think common sense is underrated, okay? But uh, the, the application before me right now and this board is for an 8 by 20 dock. And based on the information I've been given, based upon the, the, the reading I've done, based upon the discussions I've had, it's a dock in a lake. And if that's, that's the only application, is it's not disturbed, you're walking through. How many times do people walk through the woods and disturb wetlands without knowing it? Every time I walk by the lake, I have a piece of property on the lake. So every time now I walk on my property adjacent to the lake, 
I'm disturbing the wetlands? I would imagine any action that requires a government permit can be viewed as disturbing or activity. We have actual definitions of what that is in our You can read that, yeah. And they do not include an impermanent structure like a dock. Let me ask what the problem. They're, they're being taken out every year. The posts are being taken out all when they, the, If he's removed. When the docks. Another issue. This is a, your applications, you, you've been heard tonight. I am doing this as a courtesy to the neighbors right now. Yeah. This is not a public hearing. I'm answering questions. And then we're going to button this I'd up. I'd like to ask what, I'd like to ask what the issue is. Is it the dock or the access? What is the, the question is this, is it the dock or the access to the lake, which is the problem? And do any of you have a dock on Kirk Lake? Well, let me ask you a question. So your, do, your, dock, your, dock, on the, your dock on the lake, well, whoever has a dock on the lake, so where is the buffer on the lake? From the lake, it's a hundred feet. There, are you next to the water? You're next to the water. You're you have water. a buffer. So every time you have a buffer, you do. by law, by law, you have a buffer. Mm -hmm. The hundred feet from the lake. Hundred feet from the lake. Correct. That's, That's right. Mine. And I have plenty of houses that. <laughs> in the code, it, there's a buffer from every water body and water course in the town of Carmel. For a, caramel, for a caramel wetland and a DEC wetland. So if you have a stream, if I have a stream running down this aisle right here, 100 feet that way and 100 feet that way is the buffer. The wetland is the stream. If this whole room is a lake, 100 feet that way is the wetland buffer, 100 feet that way, 100 feet that way, 100 feet that way. That's the buffer. The wetland is the wet body. Pre-exist, but but what I'd like, and I understand that. But what I'm what what I'm trying to explain is, if your house the way it is right now, and you say to your husband one or whoever you at home, I want to build a sunroom on this side of the house, right? So you go to your architect and you say, I want to put a sunroom over here. The architect is going to do a survey of your property, draw the building where it's going to be, and then on that drawing because it's a new drawing, he would show the 100-foot buffer on that drawing. Yes? Well, I had a, a little deck put up a couple of years ago. Did you have an architect do it? I had an architect, a friend of mine was an architect. He did it personally. Ma'am, there's a buffer. The, then you, you got away. You built in the buffer. My problem mm -hmm. is that But a but a but a dock is not a dock is not going to affect the silt buildup in the lake. The surrounding soils around the lake, all the, the sloped areas with all those trees and everything, that's what brings your silt in. Every house on that lake who has property on that lake with their sloping landscape towards the lake all contribute to filling in the silt. The silt and comes from those areas. I don't know about clear. clearing the land, but if they come here... That's not the issue. If they, he have, ha if they have a... If they have an easement... 
for the drainage. I still don't understand. The town code is you can only take out five trees a year. Just because there's an easement doesn't mean that you can take out five trees a year. Again, I did not. Okay, I did not see that. I, that did not come before me. The only application I have before me right now is the dock. And based on, you know, my technical expertise, a dock is not going con to contribute to silt in the in the lake. Um, it's not going to disturb the lake. It's just going to be a floating structure there. It's not a permanent structure. It's a temporary structure. And. It's neither. It can be anything that you want it to be right. as long as it meets the conformity of the definition of a dock according to our code. Right. You can do whatever you want with it. It's your dock. Well, so, assuming you put your own dock up. So, folks, listen, I, yeah, I've explained as much as I could and you know, my rationale behind it. You know, this, this was not a public hearing. Um, there will not be a public hearing for this. You know, I'm, this, these are the best questions, answers I could give you for the questions we got. I appreciate your time coming in here today. Happy New Year, and uh, be safe, okay? Thank you. Thank you. All right, do I have a motion to close the meeting? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.